Welcome, welcome. It is Monday, April 15th, 2024. Welcome to Comical Opinions. I bet you didn't see this one coming. I bet you didn't. <laughs> we haven't uh, done anything for the Making a Comic uh, series in a while. And we've been spending all our time focusing on getting ourselves situated into the new publishing process where we're making video versions of our reviews in, in addition to the written ones. And so we're not quite there yet and everything's not quite dialed in the way we want it to, but we're getting much better. So we say, why don't we take a break? from dialing in and tuning and experimenting and get back to our series. And so this is the third episode in our series. One, two, three. This is the third episode in our series. And this time we're going to focus on the pitch document. <clears throat> so what is a pitch document? A pitch document is essentially a one to two sheet document. It doesn't need to be very long, but it's something that you present to a publisher when you have a pitch idea for a comic book. It gives you all the details that an editor would need to make a decision to say, okay, this is something that fits within the, the types of comics that we publish. It fits within the demographic of the types of readers that we have. And it fits within our publishing cycle for the characters and the timing and all those kinds of good, happy things that allow an editor or a publisher to make a decision about whether or not your comic works for what they are trying to do as a business. Now, the question some people might ask is, well, if I, what if I'm an indie creator or I'm putting, I'm doing something creator, um, uh, crowdfunded like on Indiegogo or Kickstarter, or what have you? Do I still need to do a pitch document? Technically speaking, you don't have to. It is a good idea for a couple of reasons. First, it's a good idea because you want to uh, get in the practice of doing pitch documents because you may do creator own stuff almost all the time, but once in a while there might be a scenario or a situation or just a, a, a good bit of luck where you have an idea about, say, Superman, or you have an idea about the X-Men, and you want to pitch that idea with the intention of, you know, getting an editor to pick up on it. And so you want to get into that practice. Number two, it's also a good idea because it helps you stay focused on what you're trying to do with your story. It helps you distill down that information to say, okay, what are the things that out of this either it's a one shot or an anthology or an arc, I want the reader to get out of it. And so it helps to kind of crystallize that thinking to make sure that you get exactly focused on the, what it is that you're trying to say with your particular comic. So what you have in front of you is a screen is, is a template that we've, uh, that we didn't create it from scratch. We took an existing template from that's used by screenwriters from different sources and we put it together and we sort of distilled it down for what is necessary for uh, doing a comic pitch. Now, different ed editors might say, we have our template. If you want to pitch to us, you need to use our template. Fine, go do that. Don't say, uh, well, I have to use this template because it's the only one that's available. Use the template that you need to use to get the pitch across to whatever publisher you're dealing with. But if you're just doing it for yourself as we're doing it here, you can use this template. And if you look down in the notes down in the description, you'll see a link where you can download a template version of this pitch document that you can use for yourself. It's completely free. You don't have to sign up for anything. It's our gift to you just for watching along and, and being part of our story. So let's take a pause and let's get into it. If you remember from uh, episodes one and two, we are pitching a updated but still set in the 1940s version of the character known as Silver Streak, which is a public domain character. We went through the first several issues of Silver Streak and Although the character is interesting and it sort of got our attention, the story in and of itself is is a disaster. It's a mess. <laughs> so much of the stuff is happening that just comes out of nowhere. He's driving a car and he's, giant, he's getting attacked by giant mosquitoes and it's a mess. So we said, okay, we're going to do our own version of it. We're going to use a lot of what we can use from the, in the original story. We're going to repurpose it and recast it in different ways. We're going to actually going to give names to the characters. For example, Silver Streak in the first couple of uh, issues has no name which is really bizarre to me, but there it is. And so if you go back and watch the first couple episodes, we, we went through that process of showing you who we collect, who we selected and why. And the second episode went through the character development sheets. So we built out the backstories for all the characters so that you understand their motivations, who they are, what they're about. So let's get into the third one, which is the pitch. So the pitch is essentially, it's a sales document. It's a sales letter. You're trying to sell this to an editor. But there are pieces in it that are also for you as well to help you distill and crystallize down the, the aspects of your story. So in this one, we're just gonna talk you through and then you can understand how we fill out different pieces. And so that when you take the template and you do it for yourself, you understand how it's going or, or you understand how to use it and how to get the most out of it. 
Uh, so the working title is just Silver Streak number one. We could come up with some fancy title that may change. A lot of this is working titles, working descriptions. Uh, it's not set in stone. It's not concrete. It should be fairly close to solid or done. But if you need to make changes, don't be afraid to make changes if it makes the story better. Uh, the log line, a test driver for an experimental technology company dabbling in gravity. That's the sort of the, the key there as far as the nature of Silver Streak's power. It's almost killed by an act of corporate sabi uh, espionage. The accident gives the power the driver superpowers, which he uses to fight an escalating conflict between corporate rivals and ultimately the battlefields of WW2. So it, the, the log line is a very short one to two sentence elevator pitch. Think of it this way. If you're trapped in in an elevator, exactly that, with an executive or an editor or a publisher, and you've got all of 10 to 30 seconds, somewhere in there, to say to them, this is what it's about. It has to be grabbing them by the throat and saying, ah, I need to know more about that. So it has to be hard hitting. It has to be fast. It has to be extremely succinct, no flush, and it really has to get to the heart of what's going to happen in that particular comic to grab their attention. Okay, so then we get to the description. The description is the same thing as the log line, but bigger. It's got more meat to it. It's got a little bit more clarity to it about what's happening, and also gives you the um, gives the the editor the sense of where what kind of vibe you get from the story, the atmosphere, uh, just the general tone, a, a lot of that good stuff. It doesn't need to be super long. Two to three paragraphs is enough, but it has to be descriptive enough to get them idea, give them an idea what kind of story, what kind of story you're trying to tell. So we gave the super. We gave um. Silver Streak, a name that we're going to call him Charles Chick Miller. Chick as in short for Charles, but it's his nickname. He's an amazing racer for Sing Industries with a single-minded competitive streak to match. When deadly act of sabotage inadvertently grants Chick superpowers of enhanced speed, strength, and flight, he becomes the world's newest superhero, Silver Streak. In this first adventure, Chick must uncover who tried to kill him and why. All roads lead to the ruthless industrialist Dr. Eli Catan, who means to steal the secrets of Singh Industries, even if it means destroying a few lives in the process. Can Chick stop Catan and his malignant henchman, the fly, before it's too late? So you, you know, if you hadn't got it from there, the, the description it feels like a solicit, something you'd read on the back of a, the jacket of a hardcover or a graphic novel, or something you'd read in Previews World or any number of catalogs. Then we get to the section about the characters. Now, we did the characters in the last episode, so instead of just rewriting all that information over again, we've included links to all the documents for the individual characters. So the, the, the editor can read through them, understand their backstories, who they are, what they're about, and even some uh, artwork samples that we've taken from different places to give you an idea of how they dressed and, and how they present themselves. So we're not going to repeat that here, but watch the last episode, which will include the link down in the description to kind of give you an idea what that's all about. Details. Now, the details section is just sort of like the logistical pieces of it. For the, if this is the planning stuff that the an editor or publisher would need to understand. Okay, if I'm going to do this, how many issues? How many pages? Uh, you know, how much paper and printing do we need to go through? If I need to get an artist, how am I going to need? How am I, how am I, how long will I need them for? This is the logistical stuff of where it's set, where it's located, and you know, just how much of this uh, comic is going to how much space, marketing, etc. So it's going to be a three-issue arc. We're going to start with issue number one. Each issue will be roughly about 22 pages. That might go up to 24, but we'll see as we get into details. Story settings, 1940s, and it'll have a tone similar to pulp adventure serials of the time, a la Flash Gordon or The Rocketeer, the modern uh, film version of The Rocketeer. Plot a simple, straightforward superhero adventure story with emphasis on science and experiments gone awry. Story should appeal largely to fans of pulp serial adventures from the golden age of Hollywood and comics. That's a very key statement right there because it tells the publisher who is who you can who do you market this for? Who is the reader audience that is going to like this particular comic? At least that's who I have in mind. The publisher might have additional insights that can clarify or expand on that particular point, but really that point is so important because it tells you this is the kind of reader who's going who probably would want to buy this comic. And so that gives that gives them a sense from a business perspective about marketing and targeting. When we ask about the characters, I tell them to refer to the links above. And the setting will play, take place in a semi-small town near Los Angeles. Plenty of space for Sing Industries to run experiments. Sort of like deserts and fields, but near enough to Los Angeles that you can get there quickly. 
So you can mix sort of rural settings and also mix city settings. A lot of that pulp serial adventure stuff from the golden age of Hollywood comes to mind where they could do a mix of both because they just go outside of Los Angeles and all of a sudden you're in the desert or you're in the wilderness or you go a little bit north and you're in the forests, that kind of thing. So we have that mix of locales there. And the reason I bring that up is because it helps the reader, it helps the publisher to understand what, what kind of artists they would need if they would need to do backgrounds. Do they need to do cityscapes? Do they need to do wilderness and, and understand the mix of talents that are required to pull this thing off? And then the outline. I'm not going to read the whole outline because a lot of this is still a work in progress, but it's pretty close, I think, to near finish. You'll get the story right away. I'm going to leave it up on the screen for a second and you can zoom in or pause it, whatever you want to do to read through it. But essentially it's first issue, he gets his powers. Second issue is the fun, what they call in screenwriting, the fun and games where they has to figure out how his powers work and trying to get used to it and then sort of uh, come into his own. But also, also at the same time, there's the undercurrent of the mystery of figuring out who tried to kill him and sabotage everything and why. And that leads into the third issue where it's, all the forces coming together and eventually culminating in the finale that still leaves a little bit of the door open for more adventures, possibly going into um, the battlefield of World War, II, World War II, since we're in that time frame and setting. And then the art. Uh, left this, situ this section blank, A, because we don't have an artist at this point yet, and B, the character profiles all have pieces of art that speak to the style and the look and the feel of the characters. So we've already filled in some of the art with our perceptions. And the second, we don't have an artist on, on tap, but that's okay because, because this should be enough for a prospective artist to kind of get their uh, feet wet or at least understand the world we're trying to build, trying to get the aesthetic and trying to make sure that they understand kind of the, 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 the visual vibe of what we're going for. So that's it. We've got our pitch document together. Uh, a few tweaks still need to happen, but we've got it together. And this is the kind of document that, that if you're an aspiring comic writer, that you would present to a publisher or an editor to say, here's what I'm going for. And it also kind of lays out the different pieces so that we have given you a live example. Now, if you want a copy of this pitch document, at least a template of it, uh, again, the link is down in the description. It's all yours. It's a Google Drive document. Download it. Do whatever you want with it. Have fun with it. Uh, but if also, if you are uh, doing just creator own stuff, only doing crowdfunding comics just for yourself, I would still recommend filling out this anyway because it keeps you focused, keeps you on track for what you're doing. Okay. So happy writing. Good luck. I hope you enjoy. Uh, so we're going to pause right here and we're going to move on to the rest of the newsletter for this coming week. Okay, and now we're back to the newsletter. Uh, if you're wondering about the pick of the week, surprise, surprise, or actually I should say no surprise at all, our pick of the week is Transformers number seven from Image Comics and Skybound. This is the first issue where Daniel Warren Johnson is not writing. He's, uh, I'm sorry, he's not drawing. He's still writing. We've got a different artist, and the, the artist we got is um, Jorge Corona. And I, I got to say, I was surprised that he did such a good job. The last time we saw Jorge Corona's work was on the Batgirls run with uh, Becky Clooney and Michael Conrad. And it was okay, but not great. Uh, part of the issue, I think, there was a lot of the coloring, especially when they brought on Rico Renzi, who has a really tough time with overdoing purples. And so the coloring didn't help. Uh, but, the, but there was a very stylistic uh, approach for Jorge Corona that I think works here because it is not the same as Daniel Warren Johnson's art, but it's stylistically similar, uh, I guess is the way to put it. Uh, and it was a fantastic issue story-wise overall. So that's definitely our pick of the week. If you'd like to listen to it, uh, we posted it up on our podcast on Saturday, which was a couple of days ago. And but if, you are, if you watch all our reviews on YouTube, it went out. I believe on Wednesday or Thursday. And then, uh, so you can watch that there as well. So you can listen to it, you can read it, you can watch it. We give you all the options and uh, there's, we're happy to, <laughs> to, to have you go along with whichever option makes sense for you because we're going to make them all available. Uh, now, as far as uh, reviews for the past week, we have the list in the newsletter. If you haven't subscribed to the newsletter, please do so. It's free. Every time something gets posted up, you get notified about it. Uh, when you see things like Pick of the Week and our audio podcast, it's all right there for you. So I highly recommend you do that. There is a link down in the description as well. Uh, okay, so let's talk about what's coming up for next week. We have uh, two indie submissions, Not Tested on Animals, number one, and Corn Mother, 
which is a one shot. Uh, from Blood Moon Comics, we have Haunted House, a love story number six, which is the finale for that miniseries. And Simon Says, number six, both from Blood Moon. From Mad Cave, we have a new series, Love Me, a romance story number one, star, which is a futuristic sci-fi, uh, eclectic, weird story involving robots. Uh, we'll get more into that when the review comes up. Uh, from Dynamite, we have four titles, so it's a big week for Dynamite. We have Army of Darkness Forever, number seven. Elvira meets H.P. Lovecraft, number three. Fine Pyrella, number 668. And James Bond, 007, number four. Big week for Dynamite. From Zenoscope, we have Oz, Fall of the Emerald City, number one, which is a uh, new arc for the realm of Oz with Dorothy. Uh, Bloodshoot, Bloodshot, Unleashed, Re Reloaded, number two from Valiant and Alien Books. We put in the request to get that. Uh, we'll, get, we'll review it as soon as we get it back. Uh, but this is one of the starting titles that are leading into Valiant's resurgent, um, which is basically reinvigorating all their titles. We have the previews for all their titles from resurgence, not the full titles, but the, the 11 page shorts, which kind of gives you a um, tone and idea of how those stories will pan out. We might do a review, not a review on that, but maybe just an early look on those before the main titles come out, just to let you know what we think. Uh, we'll see about that. Uh, then we've got from Image, we've got Cobra Commander number four. That's Image and Skybound. That's part of the Energon universe. Sam and Twitch Case Files number two, for, also from Image. And Spawn number 352, also from Image. Uh, and then from Ablaze, we have two titles, Almost Dead number two, which is a the second issue of a uh, of a story about a basically a zombie apocalypse that we read the first issue way back, like in the fall of last year. So it's been a on hiatus for quite a while. So interested to see if they made some big changes or what have you. And then uh, from Titan, we have Blade Runner 2039 number 12, which is the finale of that maxi series for the 2039 arc. So that's it. Lots of great stuff. I hope you enjoy the template for the pitch document. Please use it as you would. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments or you can email us directly. Uh, Hope you enjoy their pick of the week, which is Transformers number seven, and looking forward to the reviews that are coming up this week. Thank you very much for joining. Um, glad that you're here. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our Substack newsletter. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're growing. That's great. We want to have you along. Please do so. And thank you very much. I'm Gabriel Hernandez, your publisher in EIC for Comical Opinions. You have a great day.